Hello everybody, it's been a while, sorry. Uh, I've had this Catfish John solo done forever since the, the end of the summer, but I never got around to doing the walkthrough. So I just finally did it today. I didn't have all my stuff with me, so on the walkthrough I don't have the, uh, the envelope filter. I was using this guy here. This is a reissue of the, uh, the Mutron 3 uh, envelope filter. And, uh, but I'm not using it on the walkthrough. Uh, this is a cool solo. I got it off of YouTube. It's uh, Jerry Garcia Band, March 1st, 1980, at the Capitol Theater here in New Jersey. Uh, there's one little break in the solo, uh, you know, where there's a piece missing. But I just thought it was pretty cool all around solo, and I wanted to do it. So I did it. I've gotten the requests. I want to do some more videos. Uh, I'm going to try and do some stuff when I have time. I had a couple of requests for Cumberland. Thought I'd maybe do something with that. So um, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this one. Thanks. Okay, so the solo for Catfish John, its home is A major, um, it's going up to D, back to A, and it repeats that, D, A, again, and then it's got a 1, 5, 1, A. So the one five one is a feature, and these repeating one to four progressions, which kind of remind me of Bertha. I think you can apply some of the things in here to Bertha. Uh, so we're in A major pentatonic. Well, here's your A chord. There's your A major pentatonic. So he's melodic. Um, okay, lots of 
decoration. Um, it's pretty and it seems to kind of follow the uh, the verse melody. Okay, that's nice too. Um, it's still basically major pentatonic. You can always add this sus4. Allman Brothers always did. That, which happens to be D here, so it's uh, extra reason. Uh, that's just a sequence. I say just a sequence, but sequences are cool. happens to be. <laughs> uh, and the more of them you know, they end up finding their way in as melodic stuff. Okay. Now he does a chromatic. Now that's A again. So he's got the the five. Sorry for all that too. Little jump there, which is nice. Um, uh, all right, there's a money lick right there. And all that is is it's going to A7. It's just leading you up to the D, you know. Uh, one of the things that I always see with, um, like the dad and and Garcia even probably more so with the Jerry Band is is when he slows stuff down you know drives some people crazy but uh, it allows him to make a big production out of something simple you know so all of a sudden just going from A uh, to D becomes this whole big thing uh, so I like it um, take this idea here. Imagine you got A major, right? With the sus thrown in. Even if it's major, here's your flat 7 G. A7. That's just chromatic, you know? In any of these cases, all those in between notes are up for grabs, you know? You, some phrases make more sense than others. You, can, you know? If it's just random, it'll sound kind of random. Uh, you know, you can do all kinds of variations on the idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, here, off a of D. There's another nice little jump, right? That's hard to do. That's more advanced improvisation is having these uh, uh, these nice big leaps there. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. If you think of D, think of D like this, and I like to think of it. It's like you know, here's your D triad. But then you can add this, you can add that, and that shape. And even this is the five. And then you can find the scale that lives within it. You can add chromatics. And all of a sudden you got a bunch of notes. Okay, so... Uh, now he's got another kind of a sequence type deal. Is that D again? That's the major third of A, right? I've mentioned before, Jerry loves the major third. Ah, oh, there it is again now on the E, the major third G sharp. Now what he does here is he's leading down to this is the one five one. 
That's an E, e major, right? Um, chromatics again. There's A. Now this next bit, you know, they might call uh, lower neighbor. Um, this is the note, right? A. And I just come off it. And I do the same thing, right? There's my dominant 70. G, same one that was on. I'm, so he's landing on. Okay, because that's the leading tone. Now he's on A major pentatonic again. This is, you know, fifth fret above the octave, so that's the same as as down here. A, yeah, but it's up here. Okay. That's really cool. Now that's just kind of an A arpeggio. A6. There's the dominant 7 again, G. To the major 3rd of D. Um... So let's see what we had here. Okay, he shifts back in position. Flat five. Huh? Huh. Now this was a a uh, half step bend, effectively making like a well the G. So we bent up to the G that time, but we keep seeing what's the money note to pull the solo from the one chord A up to the um, four chord D. It's the G, and so. Uh, he keeps reaching. And then he resolves back to F sharp, which is the major third of D again. Uh. Um. Yeah, that was an A line. We've seen this off of you know this shape. This uh, adding the the E down here. It's a little new, really sassy bluesy lick there that I like a lot. Uh, now that's E. This is the one five one again. This is A. Uh, now we're really just going up like an A triad to G, of course, on our way back up to D. Um, and this has a bunch of those lower neighbors, lower neighbors and chromatics. There's our G. That was tasty. That's going to the D. Now I can go back to A major pentatonic. Okay, and just tasty blues, little chromatics. Whoops. Just 
A major. Ooh, there's another nice one. Going to D. Uh. Uh. Oh, here's a cool lick. Ah, uh, whoops. Now this, you know, is really based off of this A shape, okay? You know. Okay. Now that's... That's like a sequence, because it's really just following. Think of it as going up the chord, but each note gets surrounded. Okay. Now that's... This, that's that again. Okay, that's where the solo gets clipped a little bit. Okay, cool, that's where this one was, I was wondering. Target note. Um, there's a concept, you know, that, that they teach in improvisation. The target note. Um, and then you, you play around with that note. If you know the note that you intend to play, and then you can play off of that note. So, uh... Goes into a little BB King type deal there. But first he does this. Now this, guess what? Major third of D. So that was another theme in this solo. Um, I guess because he's got the G from the A7 and then the, the F sharp for the major third, so he just keeps working that. Uh, Alright, but he, so he played around the note. He did upper neighbor, lower neighbor, oh there it is. Okay. And basic major pentonic type deal. Okay, but this idea, that's the note I want, but it's surrounding. Right, so if you know the notes you want, you can say, well, I'm going to land here, but I'm going to take the long way. Okay, it's uh, uh, just a way of creating variation. Uh, uh, okay, this is the only time in the solo, if I remember correctly, where he falls below the uh, the twelfth fret. This entire solo. That was another thing I wanted to mention, which is kind of nuts when you think about it, because that's that's this much guitar neck. And uh, but there's a lot of notes in there. I don't know how many. I guess I could figure it out. Six times however many frets that is, um, which is what. Uh, nine, so there's like fifty something notes in there. Yeah. So that's that ought to be enough notes. <laughs> but he's almost all up there. So that's another thing, like that I always kind of notice. I tend to play towards the middle a lot, and uh, and I'll notice with Jerry Gutt, and he really gets all the way up there. Um, so the frets are tied up here, and he's very articulate up there, too. It's part of the tone, I think. Sometimes, like, how does he sound so sparkling clean? Sometimes I think it ends up being just the fact that he's playing so high. And it's nothing crazier than that. Anyway, let's see where we were.
Okay. Okay, here he's working this kind of... Right, here's A here. And here's A here. Okay, so the sixth. Uh, kind of answering himself. Recalls what we did over there, so that's you know the idea of motif. It could just be that he's like, well, who knows? But it, it works uh, thematically. Uh, uh, here we go. Oh, baby, look at that. So that's A. Oh, C sharp. Alright, so all the way up at the top there. Okay, then. And you just think of you're starting up here. Okay, so that's another thing I noticed with Jerry. So he'll take these things, these intervals. Just change the sequence. This you know, jump it around. Uh, and it also matches this thing down here that he was doing in between the uh, the BB stuff. So again, it all connects. It works nicely. Okay, this is the one five one part, so here comes E. Ooh, baby. Now that's just here's E, this one, which is the same as that whole deal. Right, so you got this triad here. For E. Um and again he's he's kinda using you know this connection, so you got A. And then G sharp off of the E, so these are a nice it's a one nice resolution. So you got um chromatics, right? Any of those in betweeners are game. Ooh, and then so and then down up and then down. That's E seven at that point. Same thing idea. Those six now, and then he's done. He's done with his solo, and I am done as well. <laughs>